Hello and welcome back to Fantasy Star Online Episode 3, where today we are going to go do our second quest as the Arcs. So let's go ahead and do it. I need you to check out the status of the high-speed transit net that the government is developing and acquire detailed information on its capabilities. Also, I need you to bring back a copy of its system boot-up data. Oh, okay. And where the heck am I supposed to find that? Still three? Yeah. And we are sending Endu on out. Didn't we have this exact same matchup but reversed when we were playing Hunters? Like, I'm pretty sure I sent Kranz on this quest and Endu was also here. Though it's gonna go a little differently this time. I'm liking the pan arms and the guard cards. So let's keep it. And if he doesn't set things with actual pluses to AP, he's not going to get through our pan arms. Don't need the Jigo Boomba if we've got a pan arms out. And there's a barbel in case we need another guard creature. I think he still needs better than the rifle to actually do anything to us. Yeah, we hit block elite this. Pan Arms is super, super good early on in the story. Because they don't really give the opponent much that can do more than three damage. right now. Let's just kill his weapons. See, having Rampage on my side of the field is so much nicer. I'm probably not going to need that barbel. Oh, hi, other two pan armses. Oh, he's running. Makes sense, he doesn't have anything to equip. Defense. Might have been a little better to save that slash, but... Really, we kind of need to squeeze out all the damage we can while he's naked. Because we don't exactly have very good sources of damage. Hand arms are definitely not a creature made for attacking. That Merlin, on the other hand... He is no longer naked, but he still can't harm us without action cards. Defense. Thanks, weak hit block. That's what I like to see. Mm. 
Yeah, we're all gonna stay where we are. Yeah, we'll have you shoot the thing and you attack the thing. It won't die, but it'll at least get close enough to it that the pan arms can finish it off. Slime. If the pan arms dies, then we know what we're equipping next, I guess. Or not equipping, Defense. summoning. Gotta protect that Merlin. Two slimes. Would have been nice to get those earlier. Uh, let's actually put this guy here. Action. So now we shoot him with the pan arms, slap him with Endu, and then have the Merlin finish him off. Yep, we win. I'll take a B. Feel like we deserve maybe a little more, but then again, we took several more rounds than we needed to. But I mean... We took no damage. We blocked a whole lot of damage. Still going for more creatures, even though we have a very serviceable deck. Because we're going to want it to be even better. Hmm. Well, at least we got a couple new things. Uh, Storm... Wow, really? No stats? What do you got, then? Okay, so random TP it could be very strong. On average, it's plus 3 TP, which... That's the same as a regular wand, which costs 2. And, like, Kane Halfguard won't matter to us at all in the story, because... Hero card versus hero card does not happen. And Machine Half Guard, sure, I guess that's okay against some decks. And skip move. What do you know? It skips move. That was a great job. My assistants have gotten your data. Once again, your performance impresses me. Keep up the good work. Will do, Chief Red. Thanks. Oh. Okay. Oh. All right. And what's that? Oh. Well, yeah. Okay. Sure. All right. Uh-oh. Okay. Pretty sure they're going to try and pin that on us, by the way. Wow, nice info. 
I guess Red gave us more info than Pentaglass tended to, so we didn't need the Vice Chief to really give us much. Hi, Lura. He's all right. Oh. You're what now? Do you? Be nice. Hi, Andrew. In what sense? Do you? Is it? Care to elaborate? Okay. I break. Who? We talking about sulfur? Yes. Yeah. So this is where the branch happens. We can do either the uh, quest person quests, or we can do the actual quests. And I think we're gonna go with Red's quests this time around, mainly because there's more cutscenes involved, and cutscenes tell the story. Also, ruin smuggling seems... Or not ruin, but uh, smuggling of fossils to me seems more pressing an issue than t trying to be a matchmaker. I mean, you never know. Maybe the couple could end up, like, curing super cancer. But, yeah, I'm, I'm going with ruin smugglers. Unguis Lapis, site of the recent fossil discovery, is being ransacked. To preserve the ruins, we want you to capture those responsible. Okay. And we're still rolling threes. Break wants to go on this quest, so we'll just use the default deck, because it works fine. I would put him into fours, but fours is really for people who don't have the option to do any casting. Break is at his best when he can mix it up both casting and melee. Well, I guess not melee for him unless he's got a guard creature. Like, he does hit for three, which is nice. But ideally, you don't let him near the enemy because if he doesn't have a guard creature, you could lose. I mean, he's got, like, 20 HP, so you're not going to lose fast, but... We can do way better than this. We did not do way better than that. These guys have weak spots, so they can't do anything to her if she's naked. But in exchange, they do pretty dang good damage for their cost against items. 
Poison lilies aren't super worth their cost. Savage wolves are okay, I guess. Action. If only I had one more point, I could have used assault and actually had a pretty dang good result out of it. I guess the enemies still don't have defense cards in their decks. Alright, we've got a barbarous wolf. That can make our savage wolf one point better. Ooh. Sorry, Claw, I cannot save you. Change dice. Set. All right, nice roll. Evil sharks are pretty good for the cost. go forward one and you go forward one Action. and we'll go ahead and have the evil shark well no because we don't need to slash the evil shark will kill the defense. swords yeah don't need to slash because she doesn't have defense cards or so I assume really want that wolf. Change. Should have kept that first hand. Well, no, we only really had a Booma in that. And really this deck's win condition, for lack of a better term, is Hildebears. Defense. It's not really a win condition, but it's the thing that definitely can contribute the most. Slicer has 4 HP. Well, there's a bear. Gonna be a while before it can get anywhere useful. No, we don't need that. The saber is the more dangerous thing here. Because the saber threatens the shark, the slicer only threatens the wolf unless she moves, and the wolf has the HP to take it. I'm going to keep that Hildebear, only because it might get used if she kills both of them. Wow, she thinks she's going to get up to me. Goodbye, evil shark. Change dice. Set. No. So uh, you get to go there, and you get to go there now. Action. Um. Yeah, if we slash, we can take out the slicer. Defense. That's at least something out of the way. And she probably will kill the wolf with the Durandal. Hey, finally, we got a tech to use. Ooh, daggers. 
So she's actually equipping multiple things at a time. Defense. Making me really wish that I had some rampage on this side of the field. But I don't. Change. Nice. Show me a six. Set. Thank you. And that's why we wanted a six, so we could summon and attack with the bear at the same time. Defense. Durandal is too threatening to break. We can't let it live. camera so we actually get a view of her and not just Ilda Bears. Defense. Poor bear taking two damage for us. Change. Nice. Show me a seven. Set. Nah. Would have been nice. With a seven, we could have hit with both Action. bears and a zonde. But alas. Because, yeah, that's one square shy of being able to reach her. But hey, we're getting some actual real damage on her. Good job, bears. Hey, a guard card. Ooh, two sixes. Hopefully she's not setting anything else. Okay. Defense. So I cannot fail to roll a four or better, which means we can definitely attack with both bears and a zonde. Change. Of course, she doesn't have defense cards, so just both bears will be enough. Set. Move. But I'm still going to do this. So, Bear gets to do his thing, Brake gets to do his thing, and Bear gets to be there for moral support. And that's game. Show me some good stuff. Another Merlin would be nice. Oh, that costs five, but it could be good. Another native guard. Oh, we didn't need another native guard. This is the only card we could even use. So, this thing, the, the range is useful if you're cornered can hit two things and it's got drain okay so it sticks around decently well and it hits kinda hard really would have liked to see plus five or better on a five cost but the fact that it sticks around yeah that could be usable we're sorry to hear that you weren't able to actually capture the criminals Lately, we've been hearing stories of smugglers taking items from Regal's ruins and selling them for high prices on board Pioneer 2. We intend to continue to keep close watch over the situation. Alright. But... Shouldn't leaving them running amok be 
good for you because it creates an issue for the government to deal with instead of having them focus all their attention on you? But hey, what do I know? You'll note we're seeing a slightly modified version of a cutscene we saw on the hunter's side. Uh, no, I just won. Like, I had you surrounded by Hildebears, and then I cast Zonde on you. Maybe it's not even slightly modified. No, those are questions that we still haven't really had satisfactorily answered. Oh, I see KC is here now. Thanks. Oh. Oh no. How can I tell which Rappy is his? Are there no wild Rappies anymore? Ooh, Rufina. All right, so with this, we've got most of our core of characters that I actually like using. You're not wrong. But yeah, Endu, Rufina, and Memoru were the three that I tended to use most often. Memoru for tech decks, Rufina for if I really want to focus on action cards, and Endu for, well, it was basically I used Endu for fighting hunters and Rufina for fighting arcs, but you can use Rufina for just about anything. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Well, that's nice. Sure. Provided there's a cutscene in it for me. Why, just because you got an eye patch, I shouldn't stare at your face? You're supposed to look at people's faces when you talk to them. Hmm. 
just trying to make eye contact. I mean, you're actually the best person in all of the arcs at using cards. You have action up. Oh, okay. Maybe? Yeah, action up. She gets double the benefit from action cards, which literally makes her the best at using cards among all of the arcs. That I am. Yeah, I won't be using you more than I have to. Do you? Did you? Feels like there should be more of this. Hi, Mamoru. You want to tell me about Vivi? I'm Redmond. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, I think I'll just call you Mamoru. Are you, though? I mean, you're better at text. Did I? Oh. Is there? All right. Except Vivi. Nah. I just have a feeling she's going to be on this quest you asked me to go or send you on. Is it? I mean, I already said I would. Okay. So let's actually take a look at the cards for these new folks. Because why the heck not? Not really going to make a deck with them, so I'm just going to go to this one and have a look. So Casey has fixed range. And XP bonus, so I guess he's crans, but arcs. And hey, he's got two AP. That's nice. And he's got rifle range always. It's a bit of a blessing and a curse type of deal because unlike crans, you can't give him weaponry that targets anything different. But he's also summoning creatures who don't have fixed range, so really they're going to be the ones doing most of the fighting. For Memoru, she's got 4, four TP just like Break. AP could use work. Move is great. Apparently all of the arcs can move pretty well. And she's got Snatch. So yeah, you get XP if the opponent has XP and you hit him with a tech. Which, hey, it's nice. Uh... It's the only thing that really sets her apart from break. Because she loses 2 AP and gets Snatch instead. So if you're doing a real tech-focused deck, she is better. 
but otherwise Brake's flexibility might be more to your liking. And finally, we've got Rufina. She's got a lot of HP. She's got a slicer range, which is annoying if you don't have action cards. But if you do have action cards, then oh, baby. It says her AP is multiplied by two, but it's actually the action cards AP is multiplied by two. But yeah, action up is strong. I've built multiple decks around it because it's strong. And we'll definitely be using her a few times. And with that, it's time to end this episode. Join us next time when we send Mamoru where she wants to go. See you then, friends. <laughs>